What's up football fans? I'm back here again to do another video. Obviously football is about two weeks away, a week and a half away from starting the regular season anyway. Preseason already is underway. Obviously the Bronx have played two games and I thought this was a perfect time to come back start making videos again for this season. Uh, I really truly enjoy making these videos and interacting with you guys here on YouTube, my fellow Bronco fans and fellow football fans. And with football being back, obviously this time of year is always the exciting time. So. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are as stoked as I am that, that football's back. And I thought I'd just go ahead in this video and just kind of touch on some of the things that stood out to me over the Broncos' first two preseason games. So far, the Broncos are 2-0 and this preseason. We beat the 49ers and Bears, which is, you know, whatever it is preseason. But we have shown some, some good things. And in this video, I'm going to, uh, again, talk, talk about some things that stood out to me in these first two games. I'm not going to cover everything, and that's really where I'm going to lean on and rely on you guys in the comment section below. To, to touch on some things and, and topics or things that stood out to you in these first two games that I didn't touch on in, in this game because I'm not going to touch on everything. Again, I'm just going to touch on uh, the, the main things that stood out to me in these first two games for the Broncos. It is a good way to start the, the new year off, the new season off, and, and, and build a little bit of momentum going into the regular season, which we need because, again, we have one of the toughest schedules uh, in the league this year, if not the toughest schedule, and we start uh, start the year on primetime television against a division rival in the Chargers. So. Um, it, it's good to build some momentum now. So I'm going to get into some of the things that stood out to me again here in the first two preseason games for the Broncos. I'm going to start at the obviously main talking point. I think everyone would agree with this. Obviously the, the quarterback position between Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch. That, that was a, a big uh, storyline in the offseason. It was a big storyline obviously going into OTAs and training camp and I think I was hoping, and I think many of you probably were hoping as well, that one of these guys would make a statement during training camp or OTAs and win the job right there so we wouldn't have any drama whatsoever, even going into preseason. But obviously that didn't happen. So it was an open quarterback competition through training camp, and, and pretty much everything you heard coming out of training camp were that Simeon and Lynch both were like neck and neck throughout the whole time. I actually went to one training camp practice this year, uh, made the trip up to Centennial, Colorado, up to Dove Valley, and when I watched, you know, them in person, both Trevor Simeon and Pax Lynch, and granted this was like the second training camp practice at the time or the third training camp practice at the time, I didn't really think either guy was either impressive. But definitely over the course of these first two preseason games, it was very clear that Trevor Simeon was the guy that, that should, should win this job and was clearly the guy that's going to give us the best chance to, to win and compete this year. Um, and Vance Joseph obviously agreed with that assessment, especially after the game against the Niners. And I believe uh, he named Trevor Simeon the starting quarterback, I believe, this past Sunday or just uh, on Monday of this week. So it was only a couple of days ago, but Trevor Simeon is going to be the starting quarterback of the Denver, Denver Broncos, at least for this season and for the for foreseeable future. Granted, you know, he doesn't get hurt again. And, and you know, if, if any injuries happen, obviously that's going to change some things. I mean, it was clear to see Trevor was the more productive guy and the guy moving the ball more down the field and, and being more efficient. I mean, he went 14 of 18 for 144 yards, a touchdown and no picks in those first two games against the Niners and Bears. And Paxton Lynch, on the other hand, went 15 of 22, which isn't bad, but only at 81 yards. He was working with a shorter field uh, most of the time, especially in that Niner game. I mean, he had a bunch of layups, a bunch of scoring opportunities, whereas Trevor obviously was working with a longer field, but still to have four more passing attempts than Trevor Simeon and have 60, 65 yards less uh, passing than him, that, that's obviously, that's not a good sign. And, and Paxton had no touchdowns, he also had no picks, and he had seven carries for 38 yards, definitely made some plays with his legs and showed that athleticism that he has and that mobility that he has. But ultimately, ultimately, I think what lost Paxton Lynch this job is just Trevor Simeon looked more polished. Trevor, he looked much better uh, in, in the pocket, much more composed in the pocket, had much more command of the offense, especially in that two-minute drill uh, at the end of the first half against San Francisco. Um, and, and again, he, I think the main thing that won Trevor Simeon this was he was much better at making pre-snap reads, and he was much better at letting the play develop, progressing through his reads, and, and allowing receivers to get open because Paxton Lynch in, in this game uh, or in, in these first two preseason games, excuse me, primarily in his, his start that he got against the Niners, he really did not allow the play to develop at all. I mean, he made like two quicker decisions, which you want to see him make quicker decisions, obviously, but he was just almost way, 
too too willing to, to get rid of the ball. I mean, he literally was one read and done. He wasn't progressing through his reads. He wasn't reading the field. Uh, again, he wasn't allowing the play to develop. He wasn't letting receivers get open. He would literally hike the ball and either pull it down to run or hike the ball and just, again, one read, quick throw, um, which it looked like a college offense at times. So that's obviously still a concern with Pax and Lynch, and that's, that's a development that he still needs to make that Trevor Simeon already obviously clearly has has made and, and has under control again i think what won trevor this job was that that last two minute drive against the niners again he just showed a, a great command of the offense much more command of the offense than paxton did was much more efficient um, and got us down in, in scoring position you know relatively quick made some nice throws to d'angelo henderson and then obviously had the beautiful touchdown throw uh to jordan taylor the back shoulder throw great placement on the ball it was a great catch by jordan taylor no question but it was a beautiful throw by by trevor simeon um, and, and again, great placement right, right, uh, you know, in front of the corner and right uh, before the safety can get there. Only where Jordan Taylor can catch a beautiful spiral as well. And and mainly, once again, I think he just showed more polished. Paxton Lynch did look a year behind still, and, and that's okay. Um, and and I'm, I'm totally fine with that. It, it is a little concerning that you know Paxton Lynch, you know, because we did trade up for him, he's a first round pick. That he still got quite a bit of development to make. I mean, his decision making also wasn't great. There was a play in that San Francisco game where. He had DT wide open on an underneath route. He had Benny Fowler wide open in the middle of the field, and he chose to throw it to a, uh, Virgil Green on a deep out route when Virgil Green was like double or triple covered. I mean, things like that, you know, clearly, um, you know, he still got to develop the lack of pre-snap reads. I mean, he, he got sacked on a, a, a safety blitz that I, I saw coming from my couch. I mean, I remember calling it out. I mean, like, there, I was watching that, that game with my friends, and, and, and almost all of us were like, oh, the safety's coming on the blitz. Paxton Lynch didn't see that and got sacked. Trevor Simeon, you obviously saw him make multiple pre, uh, pre-snap reads. And again, it was just the, the lack of not making reads and, and not pro- actually progressing through his reads. Trevor Simeon actually did that. He showed that, um, that, that development and, and that progression that Paxton Lynch obviously clearly has made. Paxton Lynch, again, was not reading the field. He was super quick with his decisions. It was one read and done. He was too willing to, to pull the ball down and run. Again, he did a great job of pulling the ball down at times and making some plays. He had some nice rushes uh, against San Francisco on third and two. He did a great job of pulling the ball down, getting the first down, and then second 11 had a good, like, 15-yard run. Um, and again, at 40 yards rushing, he has that element that Trevor doesn't think Trevor just, again, showed more polish and, and ultimately was the guy that deserved it. So I, I'm happy Trevor Simeon is the quarterback go, going forward and, and was named the starting quarterback for this season and for the foreseeable future. He's a guy that I've been uh, as critical of as anyone and a guy that I have been hard on at times and, and, and definitely doubted at times, but I'm not going to doubt this guy anymore. I mean, he's shown great toughness. He's shown improvements. He's a smart guy. He's level-headed. He, he's... He's got poise, and I think he's very, very underrated. And, and I think a you know, guy throws a beautiful ball, great arm. Throw to Jordan Taylor was a great example of that. So I'm really, really confident in Trevor Simeon going forward. And Paxton Lynch, obviously, there, there's a lot of things to continue to develop for him. Um, and hopefully he can soon. If not, uh, it would be interesting to see what the future holds for him. But nonetheless, really happy to have Trevor Simeon as our starting quarterback going forward. Uh, now we've had seven turnovers in these first two games, uh, obviously highlighted by the, the – Chris Harris picked six in that first game against Chicago, um, but we our, our pass rush definitely has has been been hurt and, and taken a hit mainly due to all the injuries that we've had along the defensive line. Obviously, Shane Ray's hurt, uh, Shaq Barrett's hurt. I believe he just returned to practice today or yesterday, so that's a good sign. Derek Wolf's hurt, Jared Crick's hurt, uh, Billy Wynn obviously tore his ACL. Unfortunately, really really devastated for Billy. Uh, in that first game uh, against Chicago. And obviously Von Miller hasn't played these first two games. Then you got uh, Demarcus Walker, our second-round pick this year, who we definitely thought was going to be a pass-rushing presence for us. He has, has been dealing with a hip flexor issue. So our D-line has, has taken a real big hit, and it, it's kind of showed with our pass rush definitely in these first two games. But we, And even with all these injuries to our D-line, again, I just mentioned six, seven guys that haven't been haven't played or have just set out. Our depth, I think, has really shown on the defensive line. I think you got to give John Elway credit for the additions he's made there. Definitely knew that was a weakness uh, that we had to address this offseason, and, and it's definitely kind of uh, shown in these first two preseason games as an as area that we've definitely improved on, starting with Zach Kerr, who we obviously signed from the Indianapolis Colts in the offseason as a free agent. I think he's 
been a monster in the first two preseason games, really showed that against San Francisco in, in our last game, and, and showed his versatility. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's like 310 pounds that can play inside and outside. Uh, in these first two games, he's had five tackles, one pass deflection, one quarterback hit. I mean, has been really active, again, playing inside and outside, stuffed the run. He had one play, I think it was against... San Francisco, I want to say it was Capri Bibbs actually ran it up the middle. Zach Kerr just destroyed the guard and just, I mean, swallowed up Capri Bibbs. So has shown his ability to stop the run, has shown his ability as a pass rusher. And again, the versatility he provides our defensive line because he is 310 pounds and can play on the outside as well because he's had to do that, again, with the injuries to the guys on the outside like Shane Ray and Derek Wolf and Shaq Barrett. Um, and Jared Crick now, so he's, he's playing all over the place. And I think Zach Kerr has really shown his value in these first two games and, and shown why he was a great signing by John Elway in the offseason. And then, of course, you got Doma, Domata Pecco, who we, of course, got from, from the Bengals. You're talking about one of the toughest guys in the NFL, really has, has, has played well, shown his leadership so far, um, and, and, and really had a great game against the Niners, showed his ability against the run, did a great job of selling the edge, and once again just kind of dominating in the trenches. Again, another free agent signing that we made, a veteran presence, a guy that has played, I believe, all 16 games in 10 of the 11 seasons. Um, he really, I thought, was phenomenal as well. Um, and then even going deeper, you got guys like Tyreek Jarrett, who's an undrafted free agent, I believe, out of Pix uh, Pittsburgh that we picked up over the offseason. He's six foot three. 335 pounds. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's an absolute monster. He's been really good in these first two games. He's had three tackles, one tackle for loss. Uh, I thought he was good against the Niners, especially making some plays against the run. Um, and again, showing that depth. You got Kasim Edabale, uh, his impact on the outside. He's obviously had to step up a lot with Shane Ray being out and Shaq Barrett being out. Um, and he's been one of the only presence uh, on the outside in terms of a pass, ru pass rushing presence that we've had in these first two games, so I've been really impressed with that Abale there. Um, he was he actually forced that uh, bad throw by Mike Lennon in the first game against Chicago. Actually hit Mike Lennon on the throw that forced that uh, pick six or led to that pick six for Chris Harris. So uh, even though we we have zero sacks through these first two games and we have all these injuries to our defensive line, I think our defensive line depth has really shown through these first two games. And and again, we we still have, have really not skipped a beat. Seven turnovers in the first two games. I think the Denver defense. Uh, again, the Orange Crush l looking as great as they always do and really excited to see what this group can go can do going forward when they when they get healthier. Obviously, we can get guys like Shane Ray back and Derek Wolf back, Shaq Barrett back, but now that we also have guys like Zach Kerr and we have uh, guys like Kasim Adebale and, and Domata Pecco and, of course, Tyreek Jarrett, we have all this depth now at the defensive line that we really can have a, a really nice rotation uh, on the defensive line front, and I think... Um, Joe Woods has, has got a, a lot of things he can play with as a defensive coordinator, so really excited about that. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, the running back battle, obviously, has been really interesting to watch. Honestly, I think D'Angelo Henderson has probably been our best player uh, on our entire team in, in these first two preseason games. I've been so impressed with this kid. I've heard so many good things about him uh, coming out of training camp. That They were saying his work ethic's great and his, his kind of obsession to really pick up this offense and learn uh, has been a, a thing of fresh air. This is a guy that apparently has been taking his playbook to the bathroom with him. Like, I mean, this is a guy that, that clearly is dedicated. And again, you're talking about another great value pickup by John Elway. Of course, he's a rookie. We, we picked him in the sixth round. Uh, I believe pick 203. Out. Again, I went to a training camp practice, um, and he was a guy that really stu stuck out to me. He was really impressive. Uh, I thought, you know, a lot of our running backs were impressive, but he was really impressive uh, in the practice that I saw. And again, I think he's been our best player in these first two preseason games. He had a great camp, as I just mentioned, um, and he's been phenomenal. The numbers have shown it as well. The numbers back up uh, that statement of him being our best player in these first two preseason games. He's had 13 carries for 84 yards and a touchdown, and he also has had three catches for 21 yards. Of course, he had that 41-yard uh, touchdown run against the Bears, showing that speed that he has and that ability he has to, to get to the outside, get to the edge, and then turn it upfield. I mean, that was a beautiful, beautiful run. Great job by the offensive line as well to get to the edge and, and seal that edge off for him. But Henderson, again, showing off that, that speed that he has to get to the outside and turn it up filled. Um, and the thing that, that really st sticks out to me uh, about Henderson is he's got such a great burst in between the tackles, man. He's really tough physical runner. He really showcased that against the Niners. 
Um, and he also has that ability as a receiver. Uh, obviously, he had um, a couple catches in that two-minute drill against San Francisco. He actually had that touchdown catch uh, on a little slant pattern from Trevor Simeon where he broke like two or three defenders in space. Beautiful job of, again, showing that shiftiness, his ability to, to make guys miss in the open field. Um, and the touchdown was called back because I think Garrett Bowles got like a, a holding penalty. But nonetheless, it still was a great play, a great play by D'Angelo Henderson. Um, again, he's a really tough runner. He's a physical runner. He has no qualms about running between the tackles. And he has an elite burst. I really believe that he's got such an impressive burst. When he sees the hole and he hits it, man, he is gone. Like, he's, he's got a great, great burst at the line. And a play that really stuck, uh, stuck out to me uh, from him that he made against the Niners, I think it was like in the... the the late part of the fourth quarter, uh, late part of the third quarter, or maybe even in the fourth quarter, he had a play. He was actually playing special teams, and he was on uh, the coverage team on a punt return, and he just hauled down the field. And I remember I'm watching it with my friend. I'm like, "Who is that? You know, who's this player? Because he's just he's gunning it down the field, man. He's he's beating everyone, just showing great effort. And he actually made the tackle on the punt return, got the returner down uh, again. Kind of Terrell Davis s there with that play. Um, and just kind of showing his 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 want to make this team. His I'm so impressed with D'Angelo Henderson. I really think he's a, a special kid, um, and I'm thrilled we got him again. Six round pick, number two hundred three overall. I think he's he's a still, and I think he really needs to be a pivotal part of our offense this season, and definitely for the foreseeable future. And could be a guy um, that could be a star in the making. Honestly. I think a great comparison for him is Maurice Jones-Drew. They're like identical body types, very similar type players, physical runners that are also really quick. Like if they get to the edge, they can turn it upfield, but they also have that elite burst in between the tackles um, and can make you miss in the open field. Again, have that real shiftiness because how, how low they are uh, to the field. They have that lower center of gravity again that kind of plays into their hands. Uh, D'Angelo Henderson again is like 5'7". MJD was 5'7". I believe they're like two pound difference between their body type, like identical body types. So that might be a good comparison going forward for D'Angelo Henderson is Maurice Jones Drew. Uh, but uh, CJ Anderson has been solid as well. I think in, in the first two preseason games, 12 carries, 45 yards for CJ, three catches for 13 yards. I think he's made a couple really tough runs in, in between the tackles, looks in good shape. Um, and the key for CJ is uh, I think he needs to just stay healthy because if we can have this kind of two headed monster of CJ Anderson, and D'Angelo Henderson, and maybe even a three-headed monster if you throw Jachai in there. We'll see what happens with him. Um, we could be super lethal. But, if, you know, CJ has, has really uh, looked good and, and looked in shape and, and, again, looked healthy, which is really key going forward. Um, and then Stephen Ridley, surprisingly, as well, has had some good minutes. He's had 22 carries. He's had more carries than anyone, um, and he's had 57 yards. He really hasn't, you know, had a ton of help from the second and third string offensive lines. Uh, but he's also had three catches or seven yards, shown his hands a little bit. Um, and he is a guy that I, th I kind of hope we, we do keep a roster spot open for, maybe even put on the practice squad, um, because he would he would be a nice guy to have as an, as an insurance policy. And again, he's a big back. He made some really beautiful runs in between the tackles. I think there was uh, a run uh, specifically, I think it was like third and one. Might have even been third and two. Um, and Stephen Ridley, we, we give the ball to him. It's just a simple halfback dive up the middle. And he gets initially stopped at the, the initial point of attack, and he ends up just kind of powering his shoulder through the, uh, through the Niners defender and then getting the first down and then actually breaking another tackle to get a couple yards. I thought, you know, not the, the, the prettiest run, not the biggest run, but kind of shows where Stephen Ridley's value could be as a goal, goal line back as well. Nonetheless, this running back battle is going to be fun to watch throughout the, the rest of preseason, and it's going to get real interesting come Saturday night when Ja Cha, of course, makes his debut because of how big of an addition he was. Again, the pop, the excitement around him, and is he healthy? And if he plays really well and he has a big game, you know, where does he fit in now? And, and now what's the running back battle look like? Because right now D'Angelo Henderson is, is really kind of impressing, and I think he's, he's making a case to get a, a big workload this year and, and be a significant part of our offense. But if, if Ja Cha kills it and looks like the Ja Cha of old or just has a significant impact, it's like, uh-oh. You know, things could get brewing in our run game, or if Josh Shaw doesn't look bad, or if Josh Shaw does look bad and he looks not healthy, then it's like it, things can get interesting. So the running back battles has been fun to watch in these first two games. D'Angelo Henderson has been the best player, I think, for the Broncos in the first two preseason games, and it's only going to get more interesting with Josh Shaw, of course, making his debut against the Packers on Saturday. That's my video, guys. Just just touching again on, on some of the things that have stuck out to me. Uh, over the course of these first two preseason games. Leave me a comment below. As I said, I'm really going to rely on you guys in this video um, and, and lean on you guys in the comment section below to touch on things that I didn't touch on in this video. Again, like there, there's a lot of things 
um, that that you still could talk about, like our, our return game with Isaiah McKenzie now as our punt returner. Uh, will, 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 will we have more juice in that regard? Uh, will our special teams uh, be better? Our coverage team has been a little shaky so far. The tight end battle, I mean, of course, we got Jake Budd there. we got Virgil Green. we got uh, Jeff Hooerman. It's like, is anyone going to make, you know, plays at the tight end position? Is it anyone going to stand out the tight end position um, and really st step up to be the starter there and become a playmaker there? The offensive line and the improvement that first unit has, has shown um, has been really fun to watch. Like, there's a lot of things I didn't touch on, so I'd really love to hear you guys' uh, comments in the section below on anything I didn't touch on, uh, as well as the things I did touch on, like Trevor Simeon winning the quarterback battle. What'd you think of, of how he's looked, as well as Paxton Lynch, our defense and the defensive line depth, uh, the running back battle, and D'Angelo Henderson, D'Angelo Henderson being our best player in these first two preseason pre games, and of course the third receiver battle. So. Um, that's it for me guys really excited that football's back really excited for the Broncos this year I think people are sleeping on us. We're not getting a ton of respect, but it's all good I like it better that way um, And I, I think Trevor Simeon I, I got a ton of confidence in him and and happy that he was named the starter And again, I've doubted him a lot. I've been critical of him a lot But I got the most confidence in the world uh, in him this year And I really believe in him and I, I think he's gonna lead us to a, a good season in our defense with our defense and the way it looks and our new D-line depth and some of the playmakers, new playmakers we got on offense. Could be a fun year. So thank you for watching, guys. Great football is back. And as always, go Broncos. Looking forward to the Packers game on Saturday and looking forward to, of course, eventually opening the season on Monday Night Football against those pesky little Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, should be a fun one.